हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू माय चैनल डीप लर्निंग बायोलॉजी यस इट इज ट्रू सीइंग इज बिलीविंग मींस इफ यू कैन सी समथिंग क्लियरली यू कैन बिलीव व्हाट इज हैपनिंग देयर यस विद द हेल्प ऑफ माइक्रोस्कोपी वी वर एबल टू विजुलाइज डिफरेंट कंपार्टमेंट्स विद इन द सेल and if you can see clearly these different compartments you can actually explain what is happening within the cell yes you must be knowing within the cell the diverse functions they are being carried out by different biomolecules now these different biomolecules they are going to have different different fates within the cell now with the help of auto radiography we can see the fates of various bio molecules now with the help of auto radiography even we can see what is going to happen when bacteriophage it is going to infect a bacterium yes if you want to know whether a protein it is localized within the nucleus or it is present within the cytoplasm or it has been excreted out of the cell then this can be done with the help of auto radiography yes if you want to know what is the fate of any of the drug where it is being localized how it is being metabolized all these event they can be studied with the help of auto radiography so within this video we are going to learn what is actually auto radiography yes we will also learn different types of auto radiography one is in vivo auto radiography another is in vitro auto radiography here we will also discuss the principle of auto radiography yes here we will also discuss some of the common radio isotopes which are generally used in auto radiography and finally we are going to discuss the applications of auto radiography so coming to the first question what is auto radiography i just want to tell you auto radiography it is an imaging technique in which we use generally radioactive compounds yes here we can also use other light emitting compounds but generally we are going to use some radioactive compounds and these radioactive compounds you know very well they are going to emit radiations and by using those radiation we are going to produce a permanent image on the photographic films so by using auto radiography we are going to develop image of the cell or the tissue under study yes here i just want to tell you auto radiography it can be classified in two types one is in vivo auto radiography another is in vitro auto radiography so coming to the first type that is the in vivo auto radiography in vivo means at the site so here in the case of in vivo radiography we are going to inject the radio isotope in the lab animal or any of the system on which you are going to do study after injecting your radio isotope you are going to euthanize the animal means you are going to kill the animals then you are going to take the whole body section or the tissue section and you are going to mount these sections on a glass slide then you are going to expose these section to a x-ray film 
now try to see here let's this is the whole body mount section of the mouse and here your radioactive element it has been localized now you are going to mount this whole body section on a glass slide and to this you are going to expose the x-ray film now on the x-ray film what is going to happen a latent image will be formed so here you see you are going to see a spot okay you are going to see a latent image then this latent image will be developed by a developer and a fixer and later you are going to see a permanent image on the x-ray film yes here i also want to tell you if you are going to use a tissue section okay so let's suppose this is your tissue section then you are going to mount this tissue section on the glass slide and then you are going to expose that glass slide with the x-ray film okay now what is going to happen your tissue section it is going to emit radiation and these radiation they are going to produce spot on the x-ray film yes with the help of a developer and a fixer you are going to see the permanent image on the x-ray film yes here i also want to add if you want to see the clear image of the tissue section you can also counter stain with dyes which are going to use in the microscopy so hopefully you have understood what we are going to do in the case of in vivo auto radiography yes in the case of in vitro auto radiography generally we are going to see different biomolecules like dna rna protein and hopefully you must be remembering the different bloating techniques like southern bloating northern bloating western bloating and various gel shift assay in all these techniques the auto radiography it is widely used to visualize dna rna or the protein yes here you see the example of sudden bloating method you know very well in the first step of sudden bloating method we perform agarose gel electrophoresis by performing agarose gel electrophoresis we separate each dna molecules next you transfer these dna bands onto a nylon membrane next you add the probe your probe is radioactive and it is going to bind to your target gene sequence now try to see here after exposing to the probe we are going to expose this film to the x-ray film so we are going to use a cassette okay within the cassette we are going to first put the your nylon membrane and upon this we are going to keep the x-ray film so both the film they are now coming in contact so now here you see from this point radiations will emit and they will make a spot on the x-ray film yes this x-ray film later will be developed by using a developer and fixer here i just want to tell you all these steps okay they are being carried out in dark condition yes this was the information related to in vitro auto radiography now we are going to discuss what is the principle of auto radiography how the image it is being formed on the auto radiography to understand this you have to understand first what is the nature of the x-ray film now try to see here your x-ray film is actually going to have a base that is cellulose triacetate or the polyester now on this base you are going to have an adhesive layer 
which is actually going to work as the substratum and within the adhesive layer you are going to have the gelatin. Now above this layer there is an emulsion is being spreaded and that emulsion it is going to have silver halide, gelatin and some hardening agent. So this is the composition of your x-ray film. Now see here this is your x-ray film and this x-ray film as I have told you it is going to have a coating of silver halide. Now try to see this is AGX coating. Okay, here your X can be bromine, chlorine, iodine or fluorine. So your AGX can be silver bromide, silver chloride, silver iodide or silver fluoride. Now this X-ray film, it is actually very much sensitive to light sensitive compounds. So whenever any light it is being exposed on these X-ray film, they are going to create spot on the X-ray film. So whenever we are going to work using these X-ray film, one of the precautions we generally take, we are working in the dark condition. We are not working in the presence of light. Yes, you can also expose these X-ray film to radioactive compounds. So wherever there is a radioactive compound, it is going to emit radiations and these radiations, they are also going to create spot. Okay, so these X-ray film, they can also detect the radioactive radiations. Now let us see what is going to happen whenever you are going to expose a membrane to the X-ray film. So as I have mentioned all these steps they are being carried out within the dark condition and these two membranes they are being kept in contact with each other in a cassette. Now try to see this is your membrane and here you are having your radioactive material. From here the radiations they are coming out and these radiations they are going to create spot here. Okay. Now here if you see on the x-ray film there is a coating of AGX. Now try to see in the presence of radiation the silver ions okay, they are being produced. This silver halide it will be reduced and there will be generation of silver ions. Next you have added the developer reagent and generally this developer reagent is silver nitrate. Now in the presence of developer reagent this silver ions they will be reduced to metallic silver and these metallic silver it is going to precipitate within the gelatin emulsion of the x-ray film. So, what, so here what is going to happen this metallic silver it is going to create the spots. Yes try to understand here this metallic silver it is going to darken the gelatin emulsion. Yes so here what is going to happen there will be formation of band some dark band. In the next step we are going to add the fixer. Now try to see what is the role of fixer. Your fixer it is going to stop the reduction and presentation of silver. So this is the first function of the fixer. Next this fixer it is going to remove the excess of silver halide from the x-ray film. So on the whole film you are going to have silver halide and that will be removed but the one which has been precipitated here that is not going to be removed. It will be permanently fixed. So on the x-ray film you are going to see a dark permanent band. So this is the basic principle how actually the image it is being formed on the x-ray film. Yes, now I just want to tell you some of the common radio isotopes which are used in the auto radiography. So 
here some of the common radioisotopes which are being used are sulfur 35 tritium carbon 14 iodine 125 and phosphorus 32 and about these radioisotopes we are going to have a more discussion in the lecture that is radioactive isotopes in life science research yes finally we are going to discuss what are the applications of auto radiography one of the application of auto radiography is to study various biological phenomena like bacterial conjugation we can study localization of radioactive substance in tissue and the animals yes by using auto radiography we can do have a more in depth study about the ultra structural details of the cell yes here i have already mentioned that by using auto radiography we can perform various techniques like sudden bloating nodal bloating and various gel shift assay yes if you remember i have already explained by using auto radiography we can study action and efficacy of various drugs neurotransmitters neuropeptides and hormones just you have to radio labeled your drug your neurotransmitter your neuropeptides or the hormones so hopefully you have clearly understood what is auto radiography what is the principle of auto radiography and what is the application of auto radiography thank you for watching this please do like share the video and subscribe to my channel deep learning biology